capabilities that this boat has is wild. There's very little left over from the old world of sailing. It's all about uh, incredible performance generated by incredible technology. There's nobody who's going to beat us around the racetrack. Yeah, we're going 50 miles an hour easily yesterday. My name is Andrew Campbell, and I'm a tactician with Oracle Team USA. I spent a lot of time grinding, um, providing hydraulic power to the boat, and then at the same time I do my best to help paint the picture for the guys in the front of the boat as to what's going to happen next so that they can plan and uh, organize their strategy on how they're going to provide oil for the upcoming maneuvers. And I try and uh, give the guys in the back of the boat a good idea of uh, what we ought to be thinking about and, and what our next move is going to be. And, um, we're always trying to put ourselves between the other boat and the finish line, so at the end of the day, my job is to make sure that, that we're in the right position on the race course to, to make sure we're winning. My name's Ian Burns and I'm the Director of Performance for Oracle Team USA. I've worked for Larry Ellison and the Oracle team since 2000. I was one of the uh, initial uh, team members for this team. Yeah, Director of Performance is a, a sort of a somewhat broad role, but uh, I'm really looking at the data that we collect every day and trying to uh, draw conclusions, act like, a, I guess, a technical coach. We've got a sailing coach and I guess I'm trying to help the guys get more from the boat, help the design team understand the physics of the boat and try and tie those two things together so the guys can use it to its fullest potential. In the America's Cup uh, boats that we sail now, we've only just started to launch them this year and um, they are the fastest course racing boat in the world. They can uh, go around a, a race course faster than any boat in the world. They fly above the water or they attain speeds of 55 miles per hour, which is illegal speeds on most freeways. They um, go incredibly quickly in all directions. They often uh, crash into the water at high speed, damaging people and equipment in their process, but uh, it makes them exciting to sail and they are the cutting edge of yachting technology. So the America's Cup catamaran is uh a 50-foot piece of uh, carbon fiber that's got a, about three tons of, of carbon, hydraulics, um, and a wing on top of it. Uh, they're all loaded on top of three foils um, that fly through the water at close to 50 knots and uh, uh, get us around the racetrack as fast as we can. You know, the reality is that the game is the same. Uh, it's just happening a little bit faster and at a little bit faster pace and a faster heart rate. So. The guys on board are providing as much energy as we can for that 25 minutes of the race. So the race takes a little bit shorter amount of time, but the reality is we're putting in everything we got for those 25 minutes. And it's by far the fastest piece of equipment uh, around a, a mile and a half track, you know, a couple of laps in 25 minutes. Nobody else can do what we're doing. Um, you know, the maneuverability is, is insane in the platform that we have. And, uh, you know, the capabilities that this boat has is wild and beyond the imagination of, of even what people would think is possible 10 years ago. I've been working the America's Cup since 1984 and uh, I've seen all manners of technology. When I first started we didn't have uh, really personal computers, laptops weren't even dreamed of and uh, the floppy disks that we used to store data on were 12 inches across. And um, in that time from hand drawn boats and uh, made from aluminium we've gone to uh, design levels of infinite detail where every single component of the boat's modelled, analysed and then built in the highest level technology factories we can think of. Um, the boats have gone from sailing at 10 knots, roughly the same speed that uh, Cleopatra sailed down the Nile, same technology, foldable sails and just pushing the water out of the way, to flying above the water with wings that power the boat. Um, there's very little left over from the old world of sailing and uh, it's all about uh, incredible performance generated by incredible technology and the technology is what I love. It's, uh, I have since I was a five-year-old on my very first boat that I owned and it still uh, gets me out of bed in the morning and uh, motivates me to stay late at night. Just looking at the technology on the boat, trying to learn from it, trying to uh, actually capture the learning and bring it back to the sailors and back to the designers to uh, get that tiny little edge of speed for the next day. We're, we're sailing similar angles um, to what boats would have been sailing 20, 25 years ago, but the, the reality is that we're going so much faster that in order to get that much speed, we're sailing a click wider. Um, but the net gain up the racetrack is always better. Um, you know, we're quite often sailing as fast into the wind as the wind is coming at us. So we're, we're gaining as much up the racetrack as there is wind blowing against us. Maneuverability is king for us. 
And, uh, you know, it's like a fighter jet. You can have the fastest fighter jet in the world, but if you can't turn the corner faster than the other guy, then he's going to beat you to it. Now, we're going 50 miles an hour easily yesterday. Yeah. In the America's Cup, although it's turned into an incredible fair of the latest technology of every sort, from hydraulic control systems to uh, aerodynamics, the uh, way the boat gets used in general determines who wins the race. And uh, we've done quite a lot of racing now on these boats. and. Um, almost every race is determined by how the crew use the technology. I mean, it's not like your old uh, uh, slow-moving conventional monohull where the skipper's looking out over the water and gets a feel through the steering wheel about how the boat's responding. This is like split-second decision-making. This is like a race car driver or a fighter pilot. A half a second, quarter of a second delay in his response time can be the difference between a perfect jibe or a jibe where the boat spears into the water and the crew get thrown out of the boat. So it's a different type of uh, crew requirement, but um, in the end of the day, all of the technology is manually powered and manually driven by the crew. There's nothing automated in how the boat sailed. And so if anything, the burden on the crew is far, far higher than it has ever been. And um, it, it makes it uh, a great challenge of tying the best people in the, in the world on the boat to the best technology and helping them actually make it work. Yeah, there's, there is risk involved. There's risk involved in anything you do. There's risk involved when you climb into your car. So, you know, the fact that we're going a lot faster adds risk to the situation. Um, you know, any time that, that we're up on the foils, you're that much higher out of the water. And when the boat comes down off those foils, it slows down in a heck of a hurry. So, you know, the reality is that the, there is risk involved and, uh, you know, we're aware of it and we do our best to mitigate it. And uh, we understand where the danger spots are. And, we're trying to be as safe as we can in those positions and, and uh, do the best we can to, to keep everybody on board safe. Safety is certainly the priority um, on board any time we go sailing, but um, you know, winning is right up there with it. We do a lot of safety training. Um, you know, the majority of it is, is kind of understanding how our uh, spare air canisters work and uh, how the breathing apparatus works. So on board every day we have a, a spare air canister on our backs and the respirator comes out to the front, um, and so we have access to it on our shoulder if we needed it. Um, so if we were to get trapped um, you know, underneath the platform or underneath the net um, or underneath the wing, if we turned over that kind of situation, then we have spare air, uh, it's 30 breaths, ready to go. And uh, ideally, by the end of that tank, there'd be a diver in the water ready to get you or one of your teammates would be able to cut you out. So um, while you've got that respirator in, you have a knife on you at all the time, and so you're ready to cut away what's pinning you down. Um, and so we do some disorientation, some you know, high heart rate, then you know, kind of figure out where you are, get out from under the net. All that's part of our training, and uh, you know, we have an understanding of, of what our body's capable of and trying to figure out how to calm ourselves down, understand the situation, assess the situation, and then get out. That's, that's always kind of part of our training and uh, you know we've got people on the water to make sure that we're we're covered but in a situation like that we're, we're ready. We use uh, a combination of heavyweight and lightweight uh, software development tools. We have a lot of routines written in Python uh, that can be adapted, changed on the fly virtually. We also have some uh, more uh, canned custom development tools which allow everyone on the team to review the day's sailing. Not just a video for example but all of the data from the boat is time synced to a, a tool that the guys can sit down and watch at their desk. They may be interested in um, the grinder output of the sailing team, what their heart rates were while they were grinding. Um, it may be how fast the boat was going, it may be what the hydraulic pressure was, which buttons were being pushed. All of this is available through the same interface and same tool which is a custom uh, a C++ program we've developed over many years here that accesses a database, accesses the video files, serves them all time synced to anyone in the base here or anywhere in the world. One of the challenges we have in the America's Cup is that the, um, the flow rate or the, the action is quite quick. You know, every day we do a lot of things and every day I was just thinking there's probably uh, five or 10,000 things that happen that people may want to review. And so we get down to the microscopic level of uh, who pressed which button when, you know, was it accidental? Was the guy leaning on the button or was he actually deliberately pressing it? That's a common request for me. If you want a piece of information from a specific moment, you're going to get it. And uh, it, can, it can be kind of clouding at times because there's so much information. Um, but, man, if you, if you need a specific data point, it's, it's there for you. And, and uh, it's pretty unbelievable to have that confirmation at the end of the day. You know, so much of it is, um, is like post, 
sailing work. It's it's uh, forensic analysis of what happened on the water, you know. But it, it gives us confirmation that we're doing the right things and that we're moving in the right direction. And those trends are invaluable in any game. The data side of our game at the America's Cup level is what separates, you know, us from um, the rest of our sport. You know, the, the gains that are made. Um, in the collection and the analysis of the data that we have is what makes um, the America's Cup as, as advanced and as developmentally progressive as it is. Well, a couple of us, you know, three of us would have been to the Olympic Games, so this is as difficult a day of training as, as you're ever going to have, um, you know, in Olympic sailing. Um, but, you know, we come in here at the beginning of the day, 7, 7.30, and, and we're in the gym right away. Um, quite often we're in the gym again in the afternoon, um, sailing or not, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's two or three hours in the gym every day trying to make sure that we're physically ready for that 25 minute race twice, twice a day during the America's Cup. One of the other problems in the America's Cup is what do you work on? We've got uh, uh, a thousand problems and a race that's coming on a definite day. We know the race day schedule exactly right now, so um, keeping absolutely on target for the priorities of the team going down to the individual level is critical but with the uh, data that we collect and the way we analyze it we can look at our progress in every area and, and it may be the nutrition of the crew or it may be how much power they're outputting or it may be how the system response time is improving over time but all of these things allow us a big picture view of our progress in a metric style uh, review and we use that a lot and I'm just thinking right now maybe we should do more of it. The tools that I use on board the boat are uh, a tactician's tablet. Um, it gives us a lot of information about where we are on the racetrack, uh, relative lay lines and uh, relative our boundaries. So what you can see on TV is, is essentially provided to us and we can see the distance that we have from our position to those uh, points around the racetrack. It just helps me navigate around the track and, and plan out which maneuvers we're going to have to do. Um, you know, but all it really does is confirm what I get out of my eyes. The guys upstairs that put a ton of time into the analysis are, are the ones who are making what we're doing on the water possible. And uh, it's pretty cool to see, you know, you know, hidden in one of these containers is our Oracle X data machine and that thing processing all of our data so that we can get off the water and say, hey, we did this right, we did this wrong. Let's see all the information from that moment. Uh, it's a pretty valuable tool for the sailors. I've never known whether we're going to win or lose the America's Cup and usually if you feel like you're going to lose sometimes you do better than you expected. Certainly last cup we weren't overly confident and it turned out alright at the very very end. But um, it's all we can do is improve ourselves, we can't make the other guys go any slower so uh, we're focused on that every day and we work as hard as we can. You know there's usually someone uh, doing something here almost 24 hours a day and uh, it's all we can do is to keep going at that pace all the way to the end.